Hey everybody, this is World War Guy here today, and I decided to kind of make a tutorial, sort of. It's more just kind of showing you what I'm doing. Um, but as you can see here, I have an M1 helmet here, and this is actually my new, my newest M1 helmet. It's a fixed bail, or my bad, front seam fixed bail, and the heat stamp is right there it's a little hard to see i think it says 169 and then i think there's an s at the end so this would make it a schluter helmet and as you can see it's uh, kind of in rough condition but i think i got it for a fair price and basically what i'm doing with it is i'm repairing stress cracks you can see there and and back here as well uh there's only really one crack this one was like the this one right here was the biggest crack. You know, you could actually see through it. And then these were just uh, stress cracks that were forming. You know, there was a small crack, but it wasn't going through yet. At least it wasn't big enough. But nevertheless, I wanted to protect those. And so real quick, I don't have the items with me, but I used a JB Weld. Which is, um, it was a pack that came with two tubes that you mix up the content. And then you just spread it on the helmet here. And so that's what I did. And then I let it sit overnight. Well, actually, for about 24 hours. It says that it takes about 6 hours to dry, but I wanted to be absolutely sure that I did not screw up. So, oh, there it goes. That. Uh, but I, made, I wanted to make sure 100%, so I waited 24 hours about. And so right now, I'm in the process of sanding... Uh, the, the sanding the weld off or the, the repair here not sanding it off but sanding it flat so that it, it doesn't look like there really isn't anything and this is my first restoration project and since this helmet is already in not the best condition I'm not gonna be I'm this is gonna be kind of a test for me so I can get the hang of repairing stress cracks on M1 helmets for the future. Although I do think it'll turn out nice. I did order paint and corking from Jay Murray. And that's going to arrive in the mail in the next week or so. At least by the time this part of the video is made. I might make it the second part for when I paint it and all that. But. So right now I'm just sanding these to be flat. And of course, when I do paint it over and the corking, I believe you will be able to see, you know, like this one, I'm not going to sand anymore because it's already kind of peeling off there and kind of showing through. So I'm done sanding this area. So I feel like once I paint over it, you will still be able to see something there. You know, you'll be able to look at the helmet and be like, huh, looks like someone put something on the helmet. But it's fine because this helmet, I don't feel... At least personally, I don't think a collector would go and buy this helmet because, you know, the inside is not the best, you know. And then the outside is all rusted at the top. There's stress cracks. So I don't think a collector would necessarily go out of their way to buy this helmet. I bought it because I wanted another fixed bail M1 helmet. And I also got it for, I think it was a decent price. And it's great because it's keeping me busy for the summer, repairing the stre stre stress cracks. And then I'm going to repaint it, recork it. So that'll be fun. The interesting, real quick, the interesting thing with Jay Murray is the paint that I bought actually came in, uh, you know, like the containers you buy at the, the paint store. So it's not a spray bottle. It's not a. It's not spray paint. So I'm going to have to. I can either use a brush to do that, but I don't want to because I feel like you'll have like streaks of paint running down. It'll be hard to get it nice and even and more correct. So I'm going to have to transfer in, um, one of those spray, those spray devices for paint. So I'm going to need to borrow one of those and I think you need to add paint thinner to it as well. Uh, I'm going to worry about that when I get there. But it's too bad that Jay Murray, at least when I looked, they didn't have any of the spray paint available at all. They didn't have it on their website. But yeah, so that's just a little little update on what I'm doing. 
it's not much of a tutorial or anything. But yeah, so the next part of the video will most likely be me painting it or at least attempting to. See you around. Alright, so before we continue, I found the, the product that I used. It's the JB Quick. Here's the other part of it. And so basically what you do is uh, you put equal amounts of both of these onto um, a surface area. You mix them together, excuse me, and then quickly, before it dries, off, off, dries out obviously, you place it on the desired location. Alright guys, so once you have finished putting on the JB Weld on the helmet, you just want to sand it down so that it's a f just about as flush as with the rest of the helmet as you can. And then sand a bit of the top and around to get that extra corking off. Um, it kind of helps even it out at the end result. Before we continue, please understand this is the first time I've ever done this, so I'm not an expert. And this helmet, the end result, probably won't be that great. That being said, uh, Jay Murray, the paint that they give you is... Um, a half a pint can so it's not in a spray can or anything so it does make it a little hard because if you go ahead and use a paintbrush on it you're gonna have the uneven lines you know you're gonna have a, a droplets dried up and everything like that so it's a bit difficult so I got these two things hopefully they'll work together I'll have to find out but it's basically this is cool you put the paint in here and then it acts as a spray can but I believe you need this uh, that we will get to on the next part. But with that being said, I only have half a pint. So I don't have as much paint as I'd like to. So, what I'm going to do, which works, or should work, is I'm going to use just adhesive spray. I'm going to spray it on the helmet, then put the corking, let it dry, and then I'll paint it over it. Like that I don't have to use the paint as an adhesive and then a paint to cover up the corking. So what you want to do is you just get your adhesive and again remember I've never done this before so this is the first experience for all of us and just spray it on the helmet. Make sure you get it everywhere you want to make sure that the corking gets well on it. This helmet for those who might be worried wasn't that good of a helmet. Um, it was in bad shape. There are stress cracks um, so it wasn't one of those collector item helmets so don't panic about that you just kind of want to spray the corking on there or sprinkle I should say oh if the wind lets me okay this is gonna be a challenge if I do it like this you guys might be blocked for a little bit uh, you want to make sure you put this in a box so that you can collect all the excess uh, corking that fell off so another way of doing it is just taking a pinch with your fingers and kind of just spray it on there. So I'm going to pause the video, do the whole helmet, and then we'll come back. Alright, so once you're done spraying it with the adhesive and putting your corking on, let it dry for 5-10 minutes and then go ahead and gently rub the excess off. Um, don't do it too hard because then it will come off fairly easily uh, but once you put the paint on it it's gonna help stick to it even more and then once you start using it in the field all that really excess corking is gonna uh, come off and it's gonna start looking more correct so just go ahead and gently rub it with your hand you know just very gently kind of like that uh, but you still want a good amount on there so that once you paint it and then you throw it around the dirt or whatever you still have a good amount left which is what you want so now we're going to oh and try to save as much as you can just in case because this is expensive for what it is so save as much as you can for the future so what we're going to do now and i'll pause the video but i'll give a quick explanation is um i will now paint it with the uh paint from jay murray uh, but the problem is that it's not in a spray can so i went to a hardware store and bought this basically it's a glass jar with a spray bottle attached to it it's actually really cool I haven't tried it yet but you also need um, paint thinner uh, the box was kind of unclear which one to use for oil base, base paint but 
this seems to be the best. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to mix. You're going to mix these two together. You're going to put mostly all paint, and then a little bit of the thinner. So I'm going to work with that. I'm going to pause the video, kind of work with it, see what's best, and then we'll get back to it. All right, everyone. So yes, it is painted. Uh, I did not bring you guys in before I started painting. I just got really into it, and plus, um, it's spray paint. So basically, what I did is I had to play with the amount of uh, thinner and a uh, paint that I had to put in here. But basically, what I did is I put I first put so one ounce of the the thinner, and then with the paint that didn't work. So I think I put about one half or two ounces of the thinner, and then I think I put about four and a half or five ounces of paint in here and there's actually still paint in here and um, I did my first coat so I'm gonna now let it dry to I'm gonna let it dry for maybe about an hour and I'm gonna most likely put a second uh, coat of paint on there to make sure that the paint is gonna look good and everything like that but if I say so if I can say so for myself uh, I think I did a good job honestly like yeah the paint's still a bit fresh and uh it's just one coat, but um, once all that excess corking comes off, the one that really doesn't want to stay on there, it's going to look a lot better. And uh, honestly, the color is amazing. Like, Jay Murray did a really good job on the color. Um, so, yeah. So, we're going to, next time we come back, we're going to see, uh, I'm going to show you the second uh, spray paint or the second layer of paint. We're going to let it dry to about, uh, the can says can says to about eight hours for it to be completely dry so we'll see each other soon all right so i just wanted to point this out so it's been about i don't know 10 15 minutes since i finished my first coat and uh one thing to be careful of is if you spray too close to it it's going to start cracking the paint is luckily i still have a second coat so that should cover it up most of most of it but um because of this box being very tall or the stand being very short um, it's kind of hard to get a good reach from it So try to get a shorter box or a taller stand and make sure you want to get it, you know a Decent distance away like this is too close um, So something like that and if it's windy It's gonna make it a little hard, but make sure you want to get a little distance from it so it doesn't end up cracking Like that, but again not a big deal. I have a second coat to still do all right, so it's been about 30 minutes close to that amount so I'm gonna go ahead and just start with the second coat so I have I'm gonna use whatever's left in here and that should be able to cover everything because I don't have to use as much um, some angles you can kind of see through the corking that's because of this the cracking in the paint so remember you want a good distance from it so like that so that it covers it better and it's not all clumped up so just And of course with the wind it's hard so got to block you guys a little bit I'll see you soon all right since I do have still a good amount of paint left not a lot but I still have some in there uh, I decided I should get a post-war Belgian uh, folding shovel. I'm just gonna gonna kind of use what's left uh, to just paint this to make it look a little better. It's a post-war Belgian shovel. It's not as historically valuable as uh, wartime ones. Don't worry. Oh, oh, there we go. It'll dry off to a better, uh, darker green color. So. So yeah, I'm almost out. Next part of the video, we're gonna see the helmet once it's fully dried. All right guys, so here's the finished product of the helmet. So it's been, um, let's see, it's been a little, about 24 hours actually. 24, 25 hours since I put the last coat of paint and let it to dry. And honestly, I'm quite happy with the result. I didn't expect much out of this. I thought it was gonna be a little worse based on my skills, but I think it turned out pretty well. Um, so of course, there's a lot of corking left on this. So, but with time, you know, use and everything, um, and wear, 
a lot of more corking is going to come off. It's still coming off at some areas, um, but that's not something I'm too worried about. The only thing I did wrong really is some of the paint is cracking. You can kind of see there, but it looks durable. It doesn't look like it's going to break off or anything. And uh, I'm quite happy with this, honestly. I think it turned out very well. So yeah, I went ahead and attached chin straps to it. Put the liner in there. It looks really good. Here's uh, an original M1 with original paint to kind of compare to. It's kind of hard to put it together. Well, if you guys can see that, here's the color up close. So very similar, very close to each other. So yeah, I'll put a link in the description to where I got the paint. So you guys can go check it out for yourself as well as other websites. But uh, I hope you guys learned something from this. I hope this will help you for your uh, restoration projects. So if it, if it did help you, drop a like, write a comment, share the video, and subscribe. But besides that, you guys have a great day.